continue with our series fear not and today we are discussing an interesting fear is fear not true discipleship and the reason why we're talking about this is because some of us at some point in our lives were afraid of committing our lives to Jesus because we didn't know what was going to happen next uh, I was talking with a young man some time ago who said to me I'm afraid of making a commitment to be a disciple of Jesus because I don't know what he's going to ask of me. Maybe he will ask me to leave my friends behind or, or just not have the same lifestyle. Or maybe he will ask me to do something big for him and I can't do it. Plus, I know I'm a sinful person. So how could I be a disciple of Jesus? Well, today we're going to discuss this because Jesus is going to do something for his disciples so that they will never be afraid of following him and do whatever he asked them to do. So let's go to Luke chapter five. He will show them there why they shouldn't be afraid of true discipleship. Luke chapter five is the actual call of the disciples to, to be his disciples, but he's gonna do it in a very interesting way. So let's get started in chapter five of Luke, starting on verse one. It happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. See, Jesus uh, is starting to uh, grow in reputation. So there are crowds that are pressing Jesus, they are following Jesus, they're listening to Jesus. And they're now by the lake of Gennesaret, which is the same uh, as the Sea of Galilee. It's just that Luke sometimes calls it Lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats lying at the edge, verse 2, of the lake. But the fishermen had gone, gotten out of them and were washing their nets. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, people take out the nets out of the water. We actually um, have seen fishermen uh, taking out the nets. And they take them out, they get the fish, they stretch the nets, they clean the nets. So when it says that they were washing their nets, it's actually saying that they are done. They, are, they have finished what they were going to do. And this is an important thing for what's coming up. So they're finished. Um, and uh, Jesus asks, he, he gets onto, into one of the boats that happened to um, belong to Simon on verse 3, Simon Peter. Um, he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put it out a little way from the land so that he could continue teaching. And it's interesting that Jesus is not just teaching in the synagogues. He's teaching in ordinary settings, too. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. So you can imagine this scene. Um, we have imagined it many times as, as uh, we visited different sides of the Sea of Galilee. Um, Jesus there in the boat talking to the people that are on the shore. And when he had finished speaking, verse 4, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. So here I have some nets. <clears throat> uh, th th these were experienced fishermen. They knew when to put their nets down, when to take them out. And they were finished. And, and uh, Jesus says, oh, no, by the way, I know you're finished. I know you washed your net, but... Put it down again, put it in, uh, into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon, a very experienced fisherman, thinks that these are absurd, absurd instructions. You know, he has already worked with his net, is already clean, he's done. And he says it, he says it to Jesus. He says to him uh, on verse 5, Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night. We know what we're doing. We're fishermen. You are a carpenter. You should stick to, to your uh, profession. We are fishermen. He didn't say all that, but he said, Master, we have worked all, all night and we worked hard and caught nothing. But I, I like this word, but, or nevertheless, I will do as you say and let down the nets. You know, when you have worked hard in your marriage and it hasn't worked, and when you have worked hard letting go of an addiction and it hasn't worked, and when you have worked hard in getting rid of that anxiety that, that keeps you awake at night, and God says, let me do it. 
just just let me take over. There are times in which you got to stop trying and start trusting because your strength is not enough. Your your uh, the way you're doing things is not working, right? So every once in a while, Jesus will say, "Okay, let go and let God. <laughs> let me do it." And so so Peter says, "Okay, but I will do as you say and let down the nets." So he lets down the nets and can you imagine the surprise when he brings it back up? And it's so full of fish that, that it says that he has to call his companions and, say, and says, look at what's happening. Verse 6, when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats and they began to sink. This is, this is like the confirmation of the, of the miracle, right? Not only did they catch a lot of fish, but the nets started breaking and then another boat came and then they filled up both boats and then the boats started sinking because there were so many fish. See, when they did it by themselves, they caught nothing. But Jesus was teaching them something and it was a lesson that they needed for the rest of their lives and it was this. Okay, let's continue and then I'll tell you what the lesson was. Verse 8, when Simon Peter saw that, he saw that his efforts had not brought any fish, but Jesus had brought this incredible quantity of fish. He fell down at Jesus' feet saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. It's interesting, this paradox that he feels. He, he falls at Jesus' feet, but then he says, I'm so sinful, I shouldn't even be in your presence. Um, you know, many people in the Bible felt this when they got close to God. Abraham did, Job did, Isaiah did. They said, oh, I'm a sinful man. And I'm going to tell you a secret. The closer you get to God, the more sinful you will feel, feel. But you will live with both realities, the assurance that God is with you and that you have been saved by him. And at the same time, that you are not the one that is making these things happen. That is all about God. So Jesus says, um, <laughs> don't fear, verse 10. Do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. See, this was about Jesus. It was not about them. They left everything, says the next verse, 11, and they followed him. They, they left the, the nets, the fish, everything, and they followed him because they realized it was not about them. And if they were going to be true disciples, whatever God asked them to do, it would be by his power. That's why Jesus did this miracle at the beginning. Because what they were going to do for God and their life as a disciple of, of Jesus wasn't going to be because of their own power. It was going to be because of God's power. And I understand that sometimes we are afraid of committing. And Jesus says, you feel unworthy? You feel sinful? You feel like a failure? Follow me. Because this is not going to happen because of who you are, but because of who I am. Plus, if he asks you to do anything, don't forget that all his biddings are enablings. He will do it. It's not your power. It's his. Discipleship is following the one who has already saved you. He has done it by his power. The same way that he saved you at the cross through his blood is the same way that he will do whatever needs to be done in your life as a follower of Jesus. So fear not true discipleship. He invites you now to follow him and he will give purpose to your life. So take all those what ifs out of your mind and just follow him. Fear not true discipleship. Mm -hmm.